Um, hello. Um, sorry, too long. Hello. Uh, I am Imran uh, from Uncommon Hyderabad. How do I turn on the notes, man? Where is my mouse? Oh, it's on the side. Sorry. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Imran. I'm from Uncommon, Hyderabad. I am a uh, mobile engineer at uh, Uncommon. I uh, work on Android. Uh, I've been working on Android for the past five years. And uh, I've recently started working on iOS as well. Uh, uh, I've also done a part, uh, I think, three, four months on React Native as well. So uh, I'll be talking about uh, responsive UI with constraint and motion layout. And uh, 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 about Uncommon Hyderabad, um, we work on mobile apps, Android native, iOS native, React native, and uh, backend, we have Go and Ruby on Rails. We have web frontend as well. Okay, so I'll uh, showcase uh, what I have been working in the past one year. Uh, I've been working with uh, a team of insiders uh, for their product. Uh, Insider Live, uh, which would, um, which is a live interactive app. Uh, the one on the left is iOS, and this is Android. Uh, I am showing you this because uh, because uh, this has this iOS is using uh, auto layout, and Android is using constraint layout. Both both the platforms share the same um, ideologies and uh, same UI creation and UX creation because both are based on uh, constraints. So <clears throat> moving on, uh, I'll be talking about basic uh, basic layouts of Android. I'll just briefly go through them and then uh, briefly talk about constraint layout. Um, and then we'll look into animations using constraint layout and then briefly talk about motion layout. I wouldn't want to go deeper into any of these aspects, but I would just want to give you a hint and get your interest peaked about constraint layout. Uh, uh, I have, uh, uh, how many Android developers do we have here? Oh, uh, iOS? And uh, uh, anybody worked with constraint layout before? Oh, cool, okay. So, um, if you uh, generally uh, we use these layouts for Android. Okay, something happened up there, but <laughs> fine. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, we have a frame layout uh, which can take only one child one child view and then uh, we have linear layout which can stack views vertically or horizontally and then we have relative layout which <coughs> uh, stacks views based on the absolute positioning of each view it has so uh, <coughs> uh, these were uh, these layouts came in as part of initial android uh, development itself and then later on, as the challenges of the mobile industry uh, increased and there were new uh, layouts coming in, new uh, uh, design concepts were coming in, then uh, Android system came up with a coordinator layout that would actually allow you to fit the app in the safe area, I mean, in between uh, from the status bar and the bottom uh, 
navigation and then there is bottom sheet view which is used to show your share sheets and then there is drawer layout that will allow you to add a sidebar from left or right uh, that will actually show your menu and then there is app bar layout which will give you a, a, a toolbar where you can add and then you can also add a collapsing toolbar which will actually enable you to do that parallax effect um, and then there was percentage layout which is duplicated now uh, you can uh, with percentage layout you can actually take the width of the view group and then put your views based on the percentage you can say 50 percent 50 percent and uh, something like that so now the challenges with these layouts are um, let's say even if you take one screen in your uh, device in on Android you would had have to add drawer layout then you would have to ha add a bottom sheet view then a bottom navigation view then you had a toolbar then you had an app bar so all these was adding on to the view stack and then increasing the complexity of the whole layout now if you take that view hierarchy now you, tomorrow someone comes and tells you that okay we have to do it in landscape now you take all of it and then convert it into landscape now it's it's going to be pain and then on top of that there are going to be a lot of uh, layout computations that will happen because of uh, some changes like let's you have your uh, list view and then you scroll and then you have other layouts that will act inside the list view so all these complications and not to forget there will be business requirements <laughs> um, analytics Google Analytics, CleverTap, anything like that, business people look at all those analytics and they decide that, okay, this button is useless. We have to remove that button. We have to replace it with something else. Okay, that will happen. Okay, nothing is finalized. That will happen. And then there will be UI, UX changes during the time of development, before the development, and after the development. So, <laughs> so things will continue to happen and imagine the hierarchy you already have of the layouts you created with so much hard work you added frame layout and then inside you added linear layout then you added a relative layout then you did all this and then oh this corner okay it's empty we need to put something there something like that will come in so you have to keep that in mind as well and then there is maintenance after you have done your launch everything is fine you had a couple of drinks and then everything will start falling apart <laughs> something has to change there so how can we overcome this how do we address this problem these problems cannot be solved you can just make your life better because changes will happen as a developer you have to adapt to changes you have to listen to people you are between the customer the, the client the customer the user and the developers the back end developers and all the other team business team you are that bridge there so you have to adapt to those changes you have to take care of those so now all you can do is you can automate your life and make your life simple so now <clears throat> two years ago Android came up with the concept of constraint layout similarly to constraint layout uh, there was a concept in iOS as well called auto layout auto layout and constraint layout are similar they, they don't differentiate in a lot of aspects. No, I don't think they don't differentiate at all. I, I, we actually took the learnings from constant layout on Android and then implemented them on um, iOS as well. So, okay. I mean, I have we've been talking about React Native and Flutter and then I'm suddenly saying talking about constraint layout and auto layout. So. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, the advantages of constraint layout is uh, flat view hierarchy the the layouts that I mentioned linear layout frame layout and uh, relative layout all these layouts and now you can decide in one layout if you want part of the layout to be linear layout or uh, part of the layout to be a relative layout you can uh, adjust the views according to the design and it's very very fast and simple to create layouts as compared to the previous uh, uh, layout creations I mean you wouldn't have to have a lot of uh, iterations to those layouts and also um, 
when you are converting your layout from portrait to landscape all you have to do is adjust those constraints and everything is in place and then there is scene changes um, since it's all constraints and it's just one layout or it could be multiple constraint layouts uh, you can define a scene you can say that okay this is a scene which has no internet this is a screen which has a 404 error and this is a screen which has the actual data so you can transition between different screens uh, I will show you a demo of a scene change in a moment okay so constraint layout these are the basics of constraint layout I'll just walk you through them there is a video on constraint layout last year at fragments okay so constraint layout allows you to set constraints and you can align your view to whichever direction you want you can align it to left right top bottom or to any other view and um, I just picked a few uh, aspects to just uh, talk about constraint layout but there are several more okay and then there is uh, image aspect ratio so that was a one to one is to one dimension ratio and then I changed it to 16 is to 9 and this is recorded while I was editing in the editor layout okay this is all live editing so this was recorded then and probably that is why the video might be a little jarry so <coughs> And then there is uh, base aligning text. Uh, you can align your views to the base of the text. And there is guideline. Um, you can use the guideline to adjust uh, a part of the screen to be completely uh, different. And then you can animate uh, moving the guideline. Uh, then there is a linear layout kind of concept in constraint layout, but m far more powerful. Uh, you can uh, pack your views, spread them or spread inside. This is similar to the Flexbox uh, justify content or align items uh, that we use. Okay, so these are a few uh, things that you can do in linear layout. Uh, sorry, in constraint layout, there are uh, there are more things like barrier and uh, um, yeah I think uh, barrier like we'll, we'll go on to look at them later okay so all right you have these constraint layouts now you can uh, we can remove a bunch of layouts like we can remove the linear layout we can remove frame layout we can remove linear layout we can remove the app bar layout, we can remove the toolbar, we can remove the bottom view, we can all put them in constraint layout. Now what do we do with those constraints? Now we we put them all in one view, we flatten the view, now what do we do with it? So the advantage of that is you can actually set one state. This is a default state of the view and I can change the constraints at programming programming level I can I just change uh, the constraint and expand the view so what I can do is uh, what I did here was I just removed the top constraint of the bottom red view and then added a bottom view a bottom constraint to be bottom of the parent now it's not just changing the constraints we can animate changing those constraints all you have to do is this you have a default constraint what you need to do is add a transition in between before applying those constraints you change the constraint set you change from the default set to an expanded set and then you have to apply a transition in between so it'll just animate that view and then you it will auto adjust the constraints of the top view as well and then you can revert back to the default uh, uh, the default constraint set and that will animate back as well so all we did was add this transition uh, to the, and apply it to that constraint main layout <coughs> okay um, so now uh, moving on to motion layout uh, 
Uh, motion layout is a, a subclass of constraint layout. It's uh, um, it's completely uh, flat. Uh, the uh, the motion layout was introduced to um, um, to remove all the transitions, the property animations, and um, uh, all the other animations uh, that we have. Uh, we, we we would need to use in a constraint layout. Motion layout would actually allow you to define your animation a scene change from one scene to another scene in XML. And when you apply that scene, it will automatically animate that scene. And while that animation is happening, you can do several other things. You can actually uh, add a rotation animation in between, or you can, uh, that is called a keyframe animations. While you are animating, you can actually get hold of the frame and then uh, do um, uh, other sort of animations on it. And then this motion layout, there is a restriction that you, it can work only on its direct children. It won't work on children above. Um, here is an example of motion layout. So this is a YouTube uh, view, which is recreated in motion layout. So while it was animating, the, the, the view on top is being transitioned on the side. So this was picked up from constraint layout examples. Please take a look at those examples. It's like really, really good. So, okay. So motion layout has a, a start and an end. During uh, the transition from start to end, there are keyframe animations. You can initiate the animation by on click or by swiping. I mean, when you are swiping, you can notify the motion layout that, okay, you can start now. You can actually define that in XML as well. <coughs> I'm not going to go more into that code because uh, it's going to be uh, in XML. Okay. Now, finally, how to choose your layout? Okay. So this is the question we had when we started working on our project as well. Um, uh, we uh, constraint layout was in beta during that time uh, a year ago uh, and then uh, I just came out of react native and uh, I enjoyed the way and the ease of creating layouts in react native how fast you could do it and then uh, hot reloading of course uh, we were trying to look to reduce the number of XML files and reduce the number of uh, 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 reduce the uh, give an opportunity to ourselves to edit the XML files as easy as we can. So anyway, so if it is a single child, you will go for a frame layout. If you have a vertical or horizontal children, you would uh, you should use a constraint layout. You could actually use a linear layout, but it's advisable you use a constraint layout, uh, which would give you the added advantage of animation on as the UX designers or business requirements come in and they say that okay this linear layout needs a text at the bottom then you can just add one text and then say bottom constraint and that will be done you don't have to deal with it again if there are relative children like the design is completely haphazard there are like half of the view here and half of the view there something like that then you can sh use constraint layout if you need a view that will animate uh, from um, a basic view to a detailed view or animate via swipe, you could use a motion layout. It has the same properties as constraint layout and the subclass. Here are a few resources. Google samples is one of the major resources I would like you to check out and it's, it's very well documented and they have really good um, examples, one which I showed for motion layout right now. And then there is uh, constraintlayout.com by Mark Ellison. You can check that out. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there uh, any questions? Ah, uh, oh, 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 that question we'll put it for later. Obvious or uncommon. <laughs>
<laughs> it isn't obvious, man. Okay, yeah. Done? Done? Okay, thank you guys.